We've started our programme this morning by talking about the passing of former Taoiseach Gareth Fitzgerald, who was first elected to Dáil Éireann in 1969, the same year that Tom Enright made his way to Leinster House. And it was in childhood that sitting Leash Offaly TD Charlie Flanagan first met Dr Fitzgerald. Both men have taken time to talk to us. Gentlemen, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank, Thank you very much, Will. Tom, what were your first impressions of Garrett Fitzgerald? Um, well, first of all, I met him in, uh, after after the election of 1969. Just afterwards, we were elected. I went up to, to Leinster House, and um, that day the, the, I met Garrett Fitzgerald. I met Tom Higgins, and I met Jerry Sweetman, and I met Charlie's late father as well, Oliver. On that particular day, uh, you normally meet a few days before the doll itself meets for the first session. So I met Garrett that day. Um, he, he was actually n- n- nearly cantering the speed he was going at when, you, when I met him. And we stopped and we had a, a conversation and all that. I, I, needless that, I knew him. He also recognised me quite well. Mm. And we had a long chat about the situation. He asked me about my interest in politics after he congratulated me. And, um, so he wished me a long career in politics and a successful career. But I found him particularly friendly, enthusiastic and full of boundless energy. That was my impression as a guy, but a really vibrant person, full of life and full of, full of enthusiasm. That, that was my first meeting, mm. my experience of him. And were those the qualities that you think contributed to his success, Tom? Um, well, it, it, it was, it was his energy and his, his intellect were what contributed to his um, success. But he also, along with his energy, and his, that he uh, he had a tremendous mind. He really had a tremendous grasp of a quick grasp detail, and also get the overall picture. Now he also had a great humanity and a great kindness. And by the way, he was a very serious family man. He had a tremendous love of his wife Joan and his, his three children. And um, but uh, he also exuded a family, a warmth of family. Um, for people and um, th- that all came true and by the way he was a very good Christian and he was a very good Catholic mm. and he took his faith uh, quite seriously as well but overall Gareth was a very rounded person and um, he, he showed right through his life uh, um, he, he, he came right through his life and uh, I think that there's, um, that's right up to, the, to his, re- his passing this, last, this morning I think it showed right through his life that he could maintain. He had maintained all of those characteristics which we were so proud of. Mm, that energy never fizzled out. He was always on the go and active until the end. Well, by the way, that is correct. The solid. When I remember you, when you'd be going around canvassing with him. You know, I canvassed with him um, then in '73, '77. Then we were, well, actually, we were both in the by-election and the Kenny when he got elected in 1975. We're above him AO. Then he was. Um, different by-elections down here at the time. We had a by-election in 1985, uh, all of that. But he, he actually, now I was fit and I could be playing a lot of golf at the time, but I can guarantee you, Gareth would be always a lap ahead of you with, with the speed and energy when walking. Tremendous energy. Mm. And I think that's what, that carries him through as well. For um, During the difficult year, periods, we'll say um, the day he to 87 government. That went through a lot of, there was a huge, when we took over at that time, the, the country's finances were in serious disarray and the government had to tackle that. And if you recollect, um, Dick Spring had a bad car accident and um, he was in hospital and Garrett met him in hospital and they were cutting the budget deficit at the time and Dick Spring objected to, to the, the level of cuts being imposed by Alan Jukes. Now all of that took place, that was the first thing, but along with, along with the financial difficulties the country faced, the IRA campaign and the troubles in the north of Ireland, they were still all ongoing and there were still a serious drain on the financial resources of Ireland. So all of that being involved, it meant that cabinet meetings went on for hours. Mm. And people might say it was a lot of discussion and too much discussion, but Gareth was trying to hold together a coalition government, which he did successfully right up to, up to 80, uh, 86, 87. But um, he was somebody who tried to get 
we'll say, some sort of a consensus as well. He didn't want to be having clashes at the cabinet meeting, and that's why they went on so well. But there was a very good affinity amongst all of the cabinet members at that time. They all got on, they had difficulties and they had challenges and all that, they faced them. But there was a great sense of unity between um, Garris and Dick Spring at that time, and the members of the whole, they were a cohesive uh, uh, government, so they were at that time. Charlie so Flanagan, Gary what are your Charlie Flanagan, what are your earliest memories? Well, my earliest memories are as a teenager when he called um, occasionally to our house in Mount Melick uh, to discuss matters with my father. And I suppose my earliest recollection of a man who spoke really quickly, uh, that you'd have to be very attentive when talking to Gareth Fitzgerald to get a grasp of what he was saying. Such was the speed with which he spoke and the vigour and passion with which he held views. Uh, but as Tom says, he was a quite remarkable man, and he was a man of great honour um, uh, at a time when, when uh, I suppose, Irish politics has suffered uh, with um, accusations of uh, people at the top lacking in honour. Uh, Gareth Fitzgerald was a, a true gentleman and a man of high honour and integrity uh, and a man who ensured that the politics that he played uh, was a most honourable uh, profession. Uh, and uh, I think that's true uh, even in the tributes over the last hour. Mm. Uh, it's true to say that he was loved and respected by all sides. Uh, I don't think Garrett had, had uh, any uh, personal enemies uh, in politics. He was uh, a patriot. Uh, even before he was involved in politics, he was a great scholar. Uh, he was an economist, he was a social commentator, uh, he was a great European. Uh, his first ministerial position in the early 70s, as Tom will remember, um, uh, was when Gareth was Minister for Foreign Affairs. At that time we had just joined the EU, the EEC at the time, uh, and Gareth was a, a great European, uh, that Ireland should play its part in Europe, that our future was with our European colleagues, that the old um, isolationist um, self sufficiency policies of de Valera and Fianna Fáil were no more. Um, and I don't think it's an exaggeration, Will, to describe Gareth Fitzgerald as the father uh, of modern Ireland. Uh, an economist, a European, uh, a great social thinker. Uh, he had ideas on everything. Uh, if, if he had a doubt on any idea, he was a great man to uh, provoke a debate. Um, and Tom now knew him better than I did, but I'm sure Tom will agree that Gareth was a great man to provoke it. But if there was something he wasn't sure of, he'd trash it out. He'd go down through it in a logical way, uh, ultimately arrive at a conclusion, um, and then go ahead with that conclusion. But he was a, good, a man with an open mind. He changed his views on a lot of things over the years. One of the few politicians who, who, who I heard say, uh, and indeed he said it in retirement, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done this, or uh, maybe we should have done that. He was a very open mm. mind. Uh, so, so he was a r rare breed in many ways then? He, he certainly was, uh, and um, a man of the highest integrity, and every Finnegale family uh, throughout Lee Shoffley, throughout the Midlands, throughout the country, uh, will be sad this morning, and will be reflecting uh, on the marvellous contribution of Gareth Fitzgerald, uh, not only to the party, which was immense, he became leader, uh, but to the country and to the citizenry of the state. Uh, and his legacy it will, will, be, will be immense. And of course, there's a remarkable irony uh, in perhaps his greatest legacy will be the Anglo-Irish Agreement of 1985. Uh, very, very difficult debates with the British government of Margaret Thatcher in particular. Uh, and indeed, it's with some irony uh, that his passing should, should have occurred um, within a few hours mm -hmm. of a quite remarkable speech uh, by the Queen of England, Elizabeth. Yeah, it's a curious in, twist in of Dublin timing, Castle, all right. In Dublin Castle. Okay, in relation to his contributions in the last few years, he was always outspoken, always active, uh, sometimes critical as well. So what was the feeling towards Dr Fitzgerald in the party in recent years? <laughs> I, know, I know there were a couple of occasions uh, when, uh, when the Fine Gael front bench, uh, some members did form the view that maybe Garrett would be better keeping his mouth shut. Uh, but uh, no, overall, he was always listened to. And I, I, I do know that in, in recent years himself and then the Kenny spoke quite frequently uh, on matters. Uh, and he, he overall, 
there is a huge love and a huge level of respect within the party for Gareth Fitzgerald. Um, notwithstanding a number of, of perhaps maybe minor utterances in recent months or recent years when perhaps he, did, when he uh, didn't agree with uh, maybe some of the approaches or stances the party was taking. But Gareth was, was a, a healthy Democrat. He did say, uh, when he was pressed and when he was asked on it, he said that he was no longer a member of Fine Gael, uh, that he was to be like an independent commentator, a retired Taoiseach, former politician. Uh, and if he had things to say, he said them. And uh, again, that was quite remarkable when you look at the contributions of other retired Taoiseach, uh, probably with the exception of John Bruton, uh, Gareth Fitzgerald uh, steadfastly held views over a wide range of issues uh, up until very recent times. I had the pleasure of opening a letter from him since the general election when he, he uh, just dropped me a handwritten note to congratulate me on my performance in Lee Shopley. I, I, I was you know, quite bowled over at the fact mm. that, that, that uh, uh, I would say Gareth was watching matters so closely. Uh, but that was Gareth. And, and, and again, uh, boundless enthusiasm on, on uh, all occasions. Can't believe, actually, it's over 10 years since his wife Joan died, and he was really very close to his wife as well. People uh, joke that, that, that uh, many of the decisions that Garrett arrived at um, in his time as district minister um, were, were uh, uh, only uh, arrived at having been approved by his wife. Yes, so well, again, there I is the expression that behind every great man is a great woman. Yeah, and I, I would agree with Tom that Garrett was a great family man, uh, in, in spite of the fact that he was extremely busy and away from home quite a lot. Uh, he 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 uh, he loved Dublin. He loved his constituency. Uh, he loved his uh, Dublin area, Dublin folk. Yeah, in fact, again, back when we were in government, it was, it was uh, uh, often jocosely, humorously, um, and maybe sometimes sarcastically regarded mm. as the Donnybrook set. Garrett was a Donnybrook man, uh, but a great Irish man. So, Charlie, your last contact was that letter following the election. Tom, when did you last have contact with um, Garrett Fitzgerald? It, it, by the way, it's, it's actually some years ago. It was at the funeral of John F. Conlon. Um, he was a Fine Gael today for Cavan Monaghan. And uh, well, I had lunch with him that particular day. Now I actually I didn't. I actually hadn't. A, I didn't meet him. Meet him since 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 that time. So I didn't. But we'll just an aside here for a second. This morning, when I was out doing a bit of shopping earlier this morning, and I was in the Super Value there in, here in Main Street in Bor. And I must say, everybody I met in the supermarket, most, nearly everybody I met knew he was dead. And the whole conversation in, in the shop this morning, in the Super Valley this morning, was about Garrett and the affection with which he was held. It was obvious. There was a lot of sadness amongst ordinary people at his passing because he was so highly respected. Still, uh, the years of streak on our politics since 1987, there was still that love and affection for Garrett by the ordinary people of Ireland. And I say every super, every shop you go into this morning or anywhere you go in, in the main streets or wherever you go in any towns or villages, that um, respect and love of Garrett, it's amazing the way the, 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 way, the way he was held in the esteem, the esteem in which he was held by the people across Ireland. Unbelievable that, that he still maintained mm. friendship and love by people. Well, that's a good note to finish on. Former TD Tom Enright and sitting Fine Gael TD Charlie Flanagan, thank you both very much for your time this thank morning. Thank you very much, Bill, and good thank morning, Charlie. And our text line is 083 30 10 103. Indeed, some people contributing uh, some nice messages. In, indeed, on Facebook, Teresa Sheeran says, Garrett the Good, one politician who did not know how to tell a lie. Uh, Joyce Campbell says God rest him and many others have extended uh, their good wishes and their sympathies on the passing of former Taoiseach Dr Garrett Fitzgerald.